Good morning. Ohio goes I must. Before we start, I would like to turn your attention that we have so many important guests, but we have two in particular today that we need to introduce. All of you have known that in the past we have had heroes from both sides of this tragic war. For the United States to have two of the most famous still alive, ones that young people, older people, and National Park Service historians look towards as admirers of what sacrifice, duty, honor, country is. The two men I'd like to introduce this morning is Colonel Charles McGee, who will be 98 years old. A Tuskegee Airman, Colonel McGee held the USF, USAF, United States Air Force record of 409 combat missions in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And I'm not done yet. He is the recipient of the Congressional Gold Medal, our nation's highest civilian award. He's a member of the National Aviation Hall of Fame and president of the National Aeronautical Association. He achieved Eagle Scout status in 1940. I'm still working on mine and received the highest recognition in scouting in 2010 when he was awarded the Distinguished Eagle Scout, Colonel Charles McGee. <laughs> Alyssa Lyons made um, made my dream come true when at Oshkosh I got a hop on a P-51. It was not any ordinary P-51. It was a World War II vintage P-51. And I went up in the air for about 40 minutes it was unbelievable. And flying in formation with us was two other P-51s and one distinguished one called the Old Crow. That was Colonel Bud Anderson's replica of a plane, a hero to many Americans, and particularly young Americans, that study and read about the aviators of World War II. Colonel Bud Anderson is only 95 today. He is a triple ace from World War II. He has been a test pilot throughout his flying career. He has flown over 100 types of aircraft. His lifelong friend, Chuck Yeager, said of Colonel Anderson, quote, the best fighter, play, fighter pilot I ever saw. Not a bad recommendation. Colonel Anderson is also a member of the National Aviation Hall of Fame and he was also awarded our nation's highest civilian award, the Congressional Gold Medal, Colonel Bud Anderson. <laughs> Among the, our distinguished guests that we have today, I'd like to introduce them. We have with us today Council General and Mrs. Ito from the Japanese Consulate of Honolulu. Dr. <laughs> Dr. and Mrs. Hiroya Sugano from Shizuoka, Japan. <laughs> Colonel Charles McGee, US, US Air Force 
Tuskegee Airmen, Colonel Bud Anderson, which we just introduced, but I'm doing it twice because they're, they're special guys, <laughs> from the United States Air Force as well. Mr. Shiro Wakita, former I Imperial Japanese Navy World War II Zero pilot. We're adjusting his seatbelt right now. <laughs> also in our crowd, Colonel Jack Detour, former World War II Army Air Force B-25 pilot. <laughs> Very special guest for the first time, Mr. Yosuke Matsusaki. Son of the pilot who flew Mitsu Fuchida's aircraft during the Pearl Harbor attack. We have among us two active duty military officers, Colonel K Kanai Tamakashi, from Japan's Self Defense Force and a good friend of mine and responsible for the setup and the dignity of this site in the last past couple days, Commander Jason Grauer, United States Navy. <laughs> One of the men that uh, has supported this for a long time, a good friend to the National Park Service and to the Pacific Aviation Museum, Bishop Rakan Ara from the Tendai Mission A good friend of mine going back longer than I should remember, Chaplain Robert Lawrence from Fall River, Massachusetts. Our co-host for today's ceremony is my boss, Superintendent Jacqueline Ashwell. She is the, and, and the Executive Director for Operations at the Pacific Aviation Museum, Mr. Ken DeHoff. Would you please both stand? Well, it's time to get our ceremony underway. It is my pleasure to introduce Council General Ito, who will share some comments with you this morning. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Aloha. Aloha. Ohayou gozaimasu. Um, Mr. Daniel Martinez, Mr. Kenneth Defoff, Thank you for inviting me to join you at this Black in the Canteen ceremony. This is my first time attending this ceremony, and I am truly honored and humbled to be here. As you are all aware, last December, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and President Barack Obama visited Pearl Harbor together and paid respects to the fallen at the Arizona Memorial here. Here at the Pearl Harbor, Prime Minister Abe expressed his deepest, most heartfelt gratitude for the post-war tolerance, benevolence, and compassion that the United States had extended to Japan, and strongly asserted that Japan and the United States take responsibility to appeal to the rest of the world about the importance of the tolerance and the power of reconciliation. The Black and Canteen ceremony is a ritual that was begun from the exact spirit of tolerance. In 1945, Mr. Fukumatsu Ito gave a proper burial to the American crewman of the B-29 that crashed while on a bombing raid over Shizuoka. Deeply affected by Mr. Ito's actions, Dr. Hiroya Sugano who believe that neither nationality nor side matters when it comes to mourning the dead, expanded that annual memorial ceremony in Shizuoka into a joint one with attendance from the United States side and brought the ritual to the Arizona Memorial. Thanks to support of many, many people, 
some of whom are in attendance today. Thank you. The Black and Canteen ceremony has become an event that truly exemplifies the importance of tolerance and the post power of reconciliation to the world. As Consul General of Japan in Honolulu, I'd like to express my deepest condolences to those who made the ultimate sacrifice in war with their lives. And to all of you present today, I'm deeply humbled and at the same time grateful for your unified commitment to cultivate the spirit of tolerance and reconciliation, which had served to greatly strengthen the natural and natural the bonds of the friendship between our two nations. Mahalo Niloa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Superintendent Jacqueline Ashwell. War is tragic, and it can illustrate the worst in mankind. And yet, there can be glimmers of hope that out of death and destruction, can emerge idyllic virtue. On June 19, 1945, two American bombers collided midair over the Japanese city of Shizuoka during a bombing mission. Both air crews were killed in the crash, and the raid also killed 2,000 Japanese citizens. The loss of life, all life, is tragic. As was mentioned, Bukimatsu Ito, a Japanese farmer, buried the crew members alongside the citizens of Shizuoka, who perished, and eventually built the Sengen Hill monuments in hopes of promoting peace between the United States and Japan. I was recently interviewed by our local newspaper, and they asked if there was an ongoing impact of this memorial on relations with Japan. They asked if I saw this memorial as a touchstone for peace and reconciliation. And I replied that I saw all the monuments at Pearl Harbor as a reconciliation touchstone. And that each December, we hold a number of ceremonies that speak to this. This is one of those ceremonies. And it is these ceremonies, these relationships, these friendships that are for me the most inspirational part of my work here at Pearl Harbor. To realize that peace is possible even when the situation feels intractable. Even out of tragedy, we gather here to commemorate life, all life, by observing this ceremony. This illustrates virtue. Being with you today for this ceremony is a part of the inspiration that I draw from this place. It gives me hope today for a peaceful future for our planet. On behalf of the Department of the Interior, the National Park Service, and the World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument, partnered with the Pacific Aviation Museum, we would like to welcome you to the 2017 Black and Canteen Ceremony on the 76th anniversary of the attack on Oahu. We are all here to remember those who lost their lives in that mid-air collision on that fateful day in 1945. But in a larger sense, we remember all those who died during the Second World War. May we continue to live in the spirit for which this ceremony was created, in the spirit of peace, compassion, and reconciliation. Again, welcome. Mahalo. Our next speaker 
is the director of the Pacific Aviation Museum, Mr. Ken DeHoff. I'm privileged this morning to be here with my friend, Dr. Sagano, and Chief Historian Daniel Martinez in this year's Black and Canteen Ceremony. We come here to honor the spirits of those military and civilian who died in a tragic event in a terrible war. In remembering them and thinking of our younger generations, we hope that our words and actions will reinforce the need for peace and understanding among all people. By our presence here today, Americans and Japanese, foreign visitors, United States visitors from around the world, we join in an effort started by one selfless humanitarian, Fukumatsu Ito, during, a, during the chaos of war and carried forward by another selfless humanitarian, Dr. Sagano, in a calmness now that only time can understand. That effort, that goal, often described as yesterday's worst enemies, today's best friends. I'm honored to join you again, Dr. Sagano, in this ceremony of peace and reconciliation. And yet my role is really at three parts. That of the member of the executive team of the Pearl Harbor Historic Sites Partnership, a public and private partnership between the National Park Service, the US Navy, the Battleship Missouri, the USS Bofin Submarine, and the Pacific Aviation Museum Pearl Harbor, who act by, who, who by an act of Congress are authorized by law to operate together in a, what I think is still a one-of-a-kind legislation that we can bring a story together between these different groups so that we don't forget what happened here on December 7th. We tell the story of on the sea, of under the sea, and in the air as we protect and steward these iconic buildings, the runways, the ships, and the stories. Second, I'm the son of a World War II Army officer and pilot who flew the B-25 also, Jack. And third, I'm an Army officer that flew in Vietnam representing another generation that knows war is not the answer. So Dan Martinez has already introduced two guests. The names and exploits of Colonel Anderson and Colonel McGee are forever etched in the annuals of history, aviation history. We're blessed to have you both here today. Thank you for joining us. It's a great honor for me to introduce two other World War II veterans and participants in today's ceremony. They were on opposite sides during the war. Colonel Jack Detour at 94 was born in Guide Rock, Nebraska in 1923. He enlisted in the Army Air Corps upon graduation from high school in Portland, Oregon in 1942 and he completed flight training received his pilot wings and commissioned a second lieutenant in 1944. Colonel, Decor, Colonel De, Detour started his aviation career at the age of 18, and we finally pried his hands off the yoke at age 80. He didn't want to stop flying. During World War II, he flew B-25s out of New Guinea initially and later out of the Philippines and Okinawa, often acting as an attack aircraft besides a bomber pilot. 
After the war, Jack returned to school in Oregon State, got his bachelor's degree, taught school, and coached football and basketball in actually the same school that he had attended earlier in his life. He was recalled to active duty during the Korean conflict, flying support missions, the Fairchild C-119 flying boxcar out of Japan. He was sent to the Philippines to check out the China transport pilots. You might remember those as the flying tigers in China. Although he was stationed in Clark Air Force Base in the Philippines, Jack flew regularly to Hanoi, Vietnam. Following the Korean War, Jack stayed on active duty and transitioned to flying C-130 Hercules, uh, supporting missions later on in Vietnam War. His last active duty uh, assignment, and some of you from Australia will appreciate this, was the commanding officer of the Australia, New Zealand, and Antarctica Air Wing. He also represented the commander in chief of the Pacific and the Air Force liaison officer to Australia. Our second veteran is Mr. Shiro Wakita. He's 90 years old. He was selected for the Imperial Japanese Navy Lucaran Flight Program in 1943 while he was still in high school at the age of 16. He was promoted to the grade of Petty Officer First Class upon graduation. Mr. Wakita had no illusions, however, what his first mission would be. That is a kamikaze pilot. Fortunately, the end of the war came before his first mission. Post-war, he was, extreme, was extremely difficult for pilots. Uh, they were generally shunned. <clears throat> he, rolled in, he enrolled in Nippon University, and, and then he went to work for the Army in Tokyo. He found his niche in the travel industry and became a member of the Japanese Olympic Committee. He is proud to have led the Japanese delegation to three different Olympic Games in Rome, Tokyo, Mexico City, as well as the Universidad of Brazil Games in 1962. In retirement, Mr. Wakita devotes his time to fraternal organizations of Yokarn veterans and former Zero pilots. Both of these gentlemen are great friends of the Pacific Aviation Museum, and they coordinate many activities today with military services and their associations. Jack D. Tour and an organization called the Dedalians, Mr. Wakita in the Unabarakai Association, where patriotism, courage, and camaraderie are preserved. Peace and education are part of the missions. Like we at the Pacific Aviation Museum, these gentlemen and their organizations understand the devastation of war. Through better communication, we have found that people can live in peace and prosperity. By our example, we believe we can share our experiences with the next generation in our countries and around the world. It is by this type of ceremony that we are conducting today that we can guide the youth into leadership roles of tomorrow. The events we recognize this week and this morning, many years ago were carried out by airplanes used for, de for destruction. Today, flying airplanes, jet aircraft, space shuttles, International space stations are the opportunities that have blossomed out of using aviation for economic growth. This is more that comes out of peace. There, there is more that comes out of peace than there is out of war. More from the new frontiers that we know from our own backyards. May this ceremony today be one that inspires us to look to the sky for a better future. Thank you again, mahalo for joining us. Aloha. Our next speaker is Mr. Wakita.
。おはようございます。私は日本の海原会の代表として、そして今日ご出席のデッドワー少佐一緒にこのセレモニーに出席することを大変光栄に思っております。私どもは。太平洋戦争が始まってお互い敵と味方分かれて戦っておりましたけれども今はそういう関係ではなくてお互いの国は大変友好に親善にまた共同して新しいものを目指して前に進んでおるわけでございます私は菅野先生が長年続けておられますこの黒子の水頭式に出席させていただいていることを大変名誉に思っておりますそれから最後でございますがこのような式典を開催していただいておりますこのアメリカの講演局並びに太平洋航空博物館こういう方々のご尽力によってこの水筒式が両国の平和と友好のために続けられていることについて大変感謝をしておりますこれからもこの式典が引き続いて長く続くことを祈っておりますありがとうございました from mr wakita i am honored to represent the unabara kai at this ceremony today and also to participate with colonel de tour we were on opposite sides during the pacific war But we are on the same side today. Both of us committed to the cause of peace and reconciliation. I want to thank Dr. Sagano for his dedication in keeping alive and spreading the story of Ito san and the Blackened Canteen. I also want to thank the National Park Service and the Pacific Aviation Museum Pearl Harbor for jointly hosting this ceremony at this very historical and solemn place. Your hospitality and generosity have allowed this story of peace and reconciliation to be spread around the world. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Colonel Jack Detour. Good morning, and Ohio goes Zayamas. I'm happy to represent the United States Airmen at this Black and Canteen ceremony. Also, I'm happy to be with Mr. Wakita. We were on opposite sides, as he mentioned, but after the war, with a friendly relationship, We are now very good friends. My World War II combat started in Nadsab, New Guinea, and it was B 25s at ship mast level against shipping, and also land targets were at treetop level. I was both a squadron lead pilot and a group lead pilot. So go, I got into most of the, the moss. My 38th bomb group was always one of the first to deploy, and we left、uh, Nadsab, New Guinea, and went to、uh, the Philippines and were on an airfield there at l i n g a y and Gulf. That's, we were then sent as one of the first outfits into Okinawa, where we were when the When the war ended. Now, this next、uh, point will be a little sad, but true. Less than half of the men and airmen that I went to combat with survived. I was one of the lucky ones, and in combat,、uh, I found, and most other people found, that luck really helps you. Now, I'd like to make a comment about Mr. Ito. 
I am most grateful to Mr. Ito for the respectful burial that he gave to our 20, B-29 pilots in Japan. He took a lot of flack for this, but he was a great man. I'm also grateful to Dr. Sugano for continuing these black canteen ceremony. And now in closing, I'm very, very thankful for the peaceful and friendly relationships we now enjoy. And with that, thank you. Our next speaker, a very special one for this ceremony. They're all special, but this is a first time. Mr. Matsusaki. Good morning. おはようございます。え、1941年12月7日、え、私の父は、え、父が操縦します戦闘機 は、この上空350機の編成軍の戦闘に立って、いち早く新珠湾上空に到達いたしました。後ろには新珠湾攻撃総指揮官の淵田光雄中佐と、え、水木通信兵が登場しておりました。有名なトラトラトラは、え、え、私は私はまたその翌年の1944年の4月に生まれておりますので、父が死亡した時はまだ母親のお腹の中におりました。ま、そういうことで私は父親は、え、日本海軍のパイロットであるということ以外全く知らずに成長いたしました。え、幸せなことに
I had the pleasure of translating and working on his words. So I will have now have them in English. Good morning. My name is Yusuke Matsusaki. I am honored to be here with you today, attending the Black and Canteen ceremony. As I have no chance to speak English in my everyday life in Japan, I feel a bit afraid that my English, which, might, which many may think so-called broken English, may not work very well for this speech. So this is why I got hired here. <laughs> here are his words. Let me tell you why I'm here today. That is because my father, Lieutenant Mitsuo Matsusaki, was a Japanese Navy pilot that flew in the attack on Pearl Harbor. He was at the forefront of a naval squadron of 350 planes. Seated behind him on this plane was Commander Mitsuo Fujita, the leader of this mission. Also with my father was radio man operator, petty officer first class, Takanobu Mitsuki. His plane was the lead horizontal bomber over Pearl Harbor at 8 a.m. on 7 December 1941. The famous coded message, Tora, 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 was transmitted to the carrier fleet and Japan from my father's plane. Flying above Pearl Harbor, my father saw in detail the attack, including the destruction of the Arizona. To my regret, I have never had the opportunity to hear from my father about the war. My father was married to my mother in 1942, a year after the attack. On December 5th, 1943, he flew into battle over the Marshall Islands in the South Pacific. He was the air commander of Navy 531 Air Group. He never returned to his airfield that day. He was listed missing in action. In April 1944, I was born, which means that I was in my mother's womb when he was killed in that battle. Therefore, I grew up knowing nothing about my father other than he was a bomber pilot for the Imperial Japanese Navy. As for me, I have been fortunate never to experience war. I was able to retire after completing a career as an engineer in the aluminum industry in Japan. At this moment, I have two daughters and three grandchildren living a quiet and peaceful life. I have long thought and I have realized that I should never forget the happiness that I have enjoyed did come at a cost. The tragic war that erupted in 1941 caused many, so many deaths on both sides. I truly appreciate that I am here to attend this memorial service with the kind invitation of Dr. Sagano and the National Park Service. I would like to pray with my father for the souls of the 1,177 casualties on the battleship Arizona and the other fatalities that occurred during the attack on Oahu and Pearl Harbor. May they all rest in peace. I believe that this prayer should also be done for the repose of the soul for my father, which I have not been able to do in a satisfactory manner. The Bible quote in Luke 23, 34 says, Jesus spoke these words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. This was also a confession of sins for the attack on Pearl Harbor. A comment often remarked by Commander Fuchida, who later became a Christian missionary after the war. Thank you so much for listening to my remarks. My heart fully appreciates being here with you today on this sacred ground of the USS Arizona Memorial. Thank you, sir. At this point, we'll now move towards the, oh, I'm at this point, we'll now move to Dr. Sagano. 
That's why you're such a good second guy. <laughs> Dr. Sagano, please. ご参列の皆様早朝よりこのセレモニーにご参列してくださりありがとうございます私は静岡で1972年以来日米合同慰霊祭を主催しておりますが日米合同慰霊祭を主催しておりますが毎年このアリゾナのブラックエンドキャン
ultimately world peace. In closing, I sincerely pray for the reports of those who sacrifices their lives for our two great nations and all victims of World War II. I earnestly hope this ceremony will help move, to, move us another step closer to world peace. Thank you. Before we move on to the segment for the pouring, the road to reconciliation for many of us comes in a variety of experiences. For myself personally, the idea of reconciliation with the Japanese came at the moment after President Bush's speech in 1991. In that speech, he called for the nation and for veterans, in particular, over 6,000 Pearl Harbor survivors gathered at the Kilo Pier for reconciliation with the words, I have no rancor in my heart towards Germany or Japan. And with those words, the National Park Service and myself personally began to go down that road. But any road you take has a guide. And for me, it was John D. Virgilio. Always, there is a whisper of remembrance and tolerance. And that came from Yoshi Tanabe. I would ask that Mr. De Virgilio and Ms. Tanabe please stand to be recognized. So I'm so happy to see them today. John will be part of our ceremony next year. And I just wanted to let you know that those are the voices that spoke to me.